He's run out of apology banners this time. Him and his suspicious mind. Not to mention the wartime measures prohibiting the sale of fabric for such frivolities. The Sprawl News About the War. On the front lines, our homegrown heroes are holding toe-to-toe -to -toe against the pungent Patradians. Okay. But back in the barracks, folks from home and away are signing up to do their part. You might even find the odd Patradian joining our ranks to fight against their own. Go get them, soldier. Uh-huh, I'm sure. And get them once for me. Talk to your local Godshed operator about how you can join the Sprawl Army today. Oh. Join the Sprawl Army today. No. Oh. I don't want to do that. That's not my job. Ugh. Any questions? Yes. A lot. Oh, I, I like that he was the one showing you the thing, though. Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. Uh, why? Why am I doing this? You mean the propaganda video? Yes. You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. <laughs> Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. Oh, uh, what? I thought my job was to decide who to let pass the gate. Exactly. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. Man, wartime sucks. I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you guardsmen. Not anymore. Uh oh We are dancing on a knife's edge here, so now you have to maintain a 2.5-star <laughs> average, oh. or it's game over. That is, you know, gonna do three or something like that. No, just do it at five. That's fine. Oh, and if you don't draft the right people, we could lose the war. Also, game over. Wait, figuratively or literally? Both. Oh no! Bum bum bum! <laughs> I don't- I- I doubt it's picking up, but the reason I'm streaming so late today is because there was a massive thunderstorm going on. Um, and like right before he said both, I could hear thunder going <laughs> outside. Very dramatic, but uh, at this point I think the storm has settled down enough that you're not gonna hear it, so. Oh my god! You'll just have to hear me go brrrr instead. Awkward pause. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Yep. Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal of your first plan. <laughs> I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Goodbye. Level eight, things are getting worse. Okay, after months of the siege, the Sprawl's resources, namely its food stores, have reached a new dangerous low. If a guard discovers any means to improve our dwindling food supply, you are to contact either myself or Stryker. Failure to contact leadership will be reflected in your star rank. Okay. So food, contact Ash or Stryker. Related, any individuals or groups coming from outside the Sprawl who will burden our food supply are to be carefully vetted. Like with item one, the decision to admit anyone who fits this description should be run by either Ash or me, says Stryker. Okay. Best of luck to those becoming responsible for drafting individuals for service on the front lines. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye. Although it may seem like sending more people to the fray is the right idea, it's not always the case. There's only send, like, good soldiers, okay? And finally, what does Malcolm have to say? Hey, Gardos, I'm breaking in a new assistant down here in the dungeon. Go easy on him if you get him when you call. Oh, if you... Go easy on him if you get him when you call? Oh, so if I have to call Malcolm... Go easy on on the goblin whelp. Okay. I gotcha, Malcolm. I gotcha. Oh, now... All right, more than meets the eye. Well, seems like we should do a little bit of bop. Just for starters, a little bit of bop. A little bit of bop. A little bit of bop. I still like the the this method for the whip. But in two of these, presumably one will work if I need it. And we have nine of these, but I don't know how many more days we have left. 
Like, I don't want to spend all my crystals on day eight if there's going to make, you know, 27 more days, but... Maybe truth and an x-ray? Yeah, sure. That sounds, that, that sounds good, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, potentially eight. And how many people are we going to have? Just hidden right behind my head. Six or five. Excuse me, ma'am. Is this the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on? It is, but I must vet you first. It is. Why? Do you know someone who's looking to sign up? Sure do, ma'am. His name is Elmer John, and you're looking at him. I'm talking about me, ma'am. I got that, Elmer John. Thank you. Yeah, I got that. Okay, um... Tell me. Now, what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. My one and only love, Glory Ann. Hey. Sure. That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. Until. Until. Dish the details, Elmer. What happened? Well, you see, ma'am, how it is is like, it's like this, you see. It all happened this way, it was. Elmer, faster with the dishing. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's just all too painful to talk about. We were engaged to be married, and I caught her in the arms of another man, my neighbor Bosco. Ugh, Bosco, how dare you? Not Deep Rock Galactic Bosco, he's cool. Wait, what if it was in that Bosco's arms? Uh, moral dilemma. Let's keep going. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to tease him about How that. How dare I, she? I trust him. I know. I know. So you're heartbroken and running away to war? Exactly. I mean, I believe it, but... Like, should I use a true spray? What are my options? Oh, just draft or deny. I, I I think he's good. Like, I don't suspect him. Like, he seems like the dude who's gonna you draft into war and then he dies, which, you know, sucks to be him, but he's just a good old country boy signing up for war to break, like, end his heartache in the bed. Yep, he went to war and died. Like, good job. You helped our troops and you lost your heartache by dying at war. Ha! Ah. So, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I guess I could have talked to you again, but... I don't know. Do it. Get out of here. Go fight in a war. You're being sent to the front line, soldier. There's no turning back now, Elmer. Oh, Glory Ann, who I caught in the arms of another man. Maybe joining up will make you love me enough so we can spend our lives together. That is one then option. Then I won't have to run off and join the army. Well, a little too late for that. There's a shred of logic in that. A shred. Not much more. Oh, you. Ah, it's you again. I. I remember you, the miserable wretch who sought me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. Hey, I've got another x-ray thing. I can scan you for some blood gold, sir. I remember you, too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. <laughs> yes, we have met. <laughs> well, that's just the... Actually, no, because, uh, like, do I x-ray or do I truth spray? Or do I metal detect? Let's talk to him first, see what he says. Then we'll figure out what tool to use on him, because, hey, guess what? I don't trust you. It is my intention to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun or worse, sacked. Mm. Mr. Dung just needs to hear my confirmation number, and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich, people-friendly nation. Could I have you tell me your number and I withdraw your money? You really think the people of the Sprawl are dumb enough to sink their own bank? Inevitably. They are. People flock to BS at the first real sign of danger. Like, Will... You're a 12-year-old who rather throw rocks at things, and you are one of the very, very few people that I trust to make decisions here. So, yes, 
I actually do think the people of the Sprawl are that dumb. Like, I trust... B? I trust Desdemona. Yeah. That about covers it. I mean, like, I don't distrust the goblins, but, like, they're still, you know, revolutionaries. Like, yeah, for, for like, making decisions to affect the whole sprawl, B, Desdemona, and Lil are basically it. So, yeah. But, uh, by the by, spritzy spritzy! Gotta get you nice and smelling good for your appointment. Honestly, what does it all matter anyway? I've spent my entire life accumulating one of the largest fortunes in the sprawl, but what good is it without my darling whelp? Aww. If only I could speak with him again, I could leave all this money behind if it would get me back my whelp. Okay. Didn't trust that well. Malcolm's working well in the, the new assistant. Maybe we could... I mean, I don't think Welp wants to go back, but that seems like the follow-up. This is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great! May I take a message? Wait, who is this? It, come on, Lil, it's Welp. You know this. Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil! It's me, Welp! I told you it was Welp. I thought so. Listen, there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Welp? Is it really you? It is, Your Grace. Welp, I never thought I'd see you again. I mean, technically, you're, you're talking on the phone, but... All right, everybody, place your bets now. Do we think Welp's gonna be like, oh... Mr. Old Mean Man, and like run off and they're all like together and happy, or is he gonna be like, hey, Mr. Mean Man, screw you, and hang up? Put put your bets on now. Well, we are on the phone. How are you? Have you been treated poorly? No one ever treated me as poorly as you, sir. I miss you, well. I miss you too, sir. Come. Run away with me. We can leave this war behind us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. Oh, Welp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining life to you. And what about your remaining money? <laughs> I'll donate it to the poor. <laughs> Just kidding, but I won't take it away with me today. Good enough. Get in there and reunite with your friend. Hey, look at that. When I saw him approach the gate, true love conquers all. Way to go, Cupid. Grumpkin T. Dankworth. And Welp. Yeah, no? Right here, it says admit. And I am going to admit, I did not see that result coming. All right. I... True love conquers all. All right. Well, hopefully the rest of them will go that swimmingly. Hi. Where is he? Where's that meek little slunk of a man? Oh, hey, I heard about you. I have no idea what you're talking about. But I do. He's off at war. Did a hopelessly heartbroken fellow by the name of Elmer John come by this way? Spouting a crazy notion, like running off and joining the army? Yeah, he's with the army right now. As a matter of fact, he did. Oh, Elmer John, what have you done? Tell me, did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing? Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me to get as far away from that fool as possible. Okay, we deny her. So, 
because he is at war, we don't send her. So we could have also denied him and then sent her instead, presumably. Since they're like, don't send everyone. I take it you're Glorianne. That's me, Glorianne. Glorianne. The same Glorianne that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like. And if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. Uh-huh. I get it. You're sick of these lunk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation. Exactly. I, I kind of want to use the metal detect. Like, she could be hiding something under that skirt, but... Even if that fool Elmer John is drafted as well, and he's there waiting for me with his big dumb eyes and his cutie pie dimples, it won't matter. Tell me why. He won't be able to smooth talk his way back into my heart after doing something so stupid like running off and joining the war. Okay, yeah, but what actually happened between you two? At this point, it doesn't matter if you let him in or not. Either way, I've made up my mind. Oh, why? Come on. You really don't want to know if he was or wasn't drafted? What if he's at home waiting for you? With a big ol' apology banner that says, <laughs> I'm a fool, take me back. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if I wanted to go with that until... Uh, I'm a fool, take me back. That is one of the... I I love the way that the voice actress delivered that line. That was very good. He's run out of apology banners this time. Him and his suspicious mind. Not to mention the wartime measures prohibiting the sale of fabric for such frivolities. Fair. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to hear the rest of this story. Florian, I gotta know. Did Elmer John really find you in the arms of another man? That's only what Elmer thought he saw. Hey, okay, but what did he see? It all started when that big loud Bosco from Two Houses Over came round like he always does to try to court me again. Uh-huh. I explained to him that Elmer John had asked for my hand and that I had said yes. And then Bosco explodes and says he's gonna smash Elmer's head like a jug. So I lunged at Bosco to hold him back. The big brute! That's what Elmer saw. And the next thing I know, he's crying about going off to war. Uh, okay, sure. Sounds like before you go and do the same thing, Elmer's gone and done and run off with a hurt heart. Maybe y'all should be slowing your ride and talking it through too. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? Why are you talking like that? I thought you wanted to. I sure don't. Can you just do me a favor and do the opposite of what you did for him, for me? Sure. That's confusing, but okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. The opposite. Denied. I. Now, I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you apart. W wait, yes, that that's exactly what I'm doing. I understand. Oh, I... I you're being and like, I'm not doing this because I didn't draft him and I want you two to be together. Understood. I'm doing this because I don't think you fully thought this through. I'm denying your recruitment into the army. I guess I was acting a little hot under the collar there for a minute. I should go home and talk things over with Elmer and... Yeah, he's not there. Wait. Now will you tell me? What happened to him? Did he get drafted into the war? Yes, he's on his way to the front. He won't be waiting for you when you get home. I just hope there's someone big and strong to back him up out there. Like your neighbor from two houses down? I can send him off to war if you want. Hi. Okay, how's it going, buddy? Oh, hello, Lil. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Well, I mean, for you, where where I am, it's been horribly raining and lightning, and like it's coming down in sheets, and kind of looks like the apocalypse outside. But sure, lovely day. Let's sing about it. 
If I step outside, I might drown. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you again. You too. Uh, that's funny. All right. How's, how's I'm doing? just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking yep. to help each other out. Yeah, we're we are pro GLA this run, so that's cool by me. The GLA sounds like it's thriving. It sure is. Uh, I mean, yeah, I trust, I trust that, especially after the wedding. We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without anyone knowing. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Hold up. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. It can't, do I have to confiscate it? Like, I mean, I don't want to stop you from... I can rewind time. I'll return them for now and see if I can use the uh, decoder on them. Because, like, I want to see if there's secret plants, like, like tunnel under the sprawl and, like, blow it up type of thing. Um, but if I can't use it, I can always just reset the thing. You should take these to the queen. I'm on my way there now. Hey. Um. Let's talk to you again. Like, I, I don't need to use a truth. Oh, did the game. F uh, my game froze. When did it last save? So the third conversation we never had with him. Do you really think running off to war with a broken heart is the right thing to do? Have you tried talking to her about it? No way, no how, no ma'am. The minute I saw them together, I jumped to the first conclusion in my head and left town to do the first thing I thought of doing. Yeah, I'm glad we heard that, because... Now, are you going to let me join up or what? Yeah. You seem set on running away from your problems. Who am I to try and stop you? Who am I to try and stop you? You're the one in charge of drafting people, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, right. I am. I guess I could stop you if I wanted to. But I don't. Especially because we know that for her, it's just like, do the opposite of whatever he does. And she specifically is like, oh, I didn't think about this. So like, I think it's better that he goes to war and she stays uh, rather than the opposite. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Can we cheat this? I mean, like on the one hand, it's like, oh... You're resetting just to save a crystal bag. I wasn't going to, but if the game's gonna crash, I might as well make use of it. Well, huh, yes, you get the well, same thing, well, even though you, how, you don't know that I, he wants to speak I, with him. Come. Sir. Oh. I'll go. Good enough for me. True love. Love. True love. There we go. Back to where we were when this whole oh. thing crashed. Not you. How you doing? All right, so we talked to you first. I'm just coming from the. It. Yeah. We made some. Ma okay. I hope. So this time though. You should take. I'm on. The the benefit of crashing is I got to see the board again, and I should probably read it after this just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Because I was totally forgetting if it has anything to do with food. Call Ash. And this does. Tunnel plans to increase our dwindling food supplies. Yeah. Let him in post haste. Let him in. The city's best and brightest will go over the map and construction will begin in no time. We have food. We have food. Well done, child. All right. There. Now if it's a secret plan to, like, bomb the place, it's not my fault. It, it's ashes. So, you know. I can't believe I didn't tell you. Big updates from the GLA. Uh, yeah? Queen Desdemona and her goblin lover, Chuck, have implemented all these different programs for non-humans. It's a great day to be a goblin. Nice. And Gary is learning to become a mage. I think he got a bit carried away playing Magnus the Magnificent. Yeah, we saw that in his 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 epilogue of that chapter. I I trust that. I knew Desi would get it done. Desi? Desi. Queen Desdemona? I'm trying to make it a thing. Try to keep up. I'm trying to make it a thing. But she's just like, nah, not a thing. Let them in. 
Gobble, gobble, go get us some food. Lil, it is always a pleasure. Yeah. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Yeah. Do you really mean that? I do. I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. Man, we are getting just all the feel-good stories on this one. The tunnel plans are underway. Soon there will be more food for the people to sprawl. Well done. We get Welp and Grumpkin T. Dankworth or whatever. True love. Julian's just like, man, it's great to be a goblin now. And I'm like, have a good day. And they're like, do you really mean that? I'm like, yeah. Like, everything's just so happy and feel good. You know, except for the bloody war going on outside the walls. But, you know, but aside from that, everything's great. All right, who's next? Oh, hi. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... Uh, thanks, I guess. I, I, you're, he's fine. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it, Cecil. I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. Oh, I don't. I'm actually not sure I do know where to find you. Eh? Oh, well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess... Sorry, Queen Desdemona. You? Yeah. After you finished your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Sounds good. Our thing. Big ears. Why? Uh, I go with why. Why does Her Majesty want to see me? She's meeting with some high-ranking member of the Mage's Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the Guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. Yeah, well, screw them. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Well, she can count on me. It's true. I hope. Yeah. I mean, we sent Tyronius packing. Like, I've stood up to the Mage's Guild before. I hope so, too. The fate of the Sprawl may rest in your hands. It has, it is, and it will. It always does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you write your dad, tell him we all wish him well. Mind your business. Yeah, I will. I will. I know he'd love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. Eh, everyone's so friendly. A familiar group of black-clad folk approach the shed, weeping and moaning. Oh boy, here we go. Hi. You must help us, child. <laughs> I do like that they're... First, we got the one dude arrested for smuggling drugs. Then there's the werewolf dude who we sent to prison at his own request. But he... Well, his epilogue, like, he ran off elsewhere and then got bit by another werewolf. Does, who's... Who are we losing this time? Yeah, how do I have to help? We have been left without shelter. Oh, no. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen. <laughs> I mean, they probably want me to deny them, but we'll see. But I think that's... Yeah, strikers, any individual groups coming from outside who will burden our food supply should be carefully vetted. So talk to Ash or Striker. Best of luck for becoming responsible for drafting. Remember, there's always more than meets the eye. So yeah, that, that's the draft stuff. So call Ash or Striker. Um, I guess I could call them both and then leave one thing for an item. Let's start with Stryker. I spent a summer growing up in Scarborough. What happened there is a crying shame. What did happen? While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. You may let them in. Excellent. Okay, so then that's like, no, we don't have enough food if you didn't do the goblin stuff. However, right? with groups like this, you have to make sure criminals aren't infiltrating the sprawl, hiding in plain sight. Ba -ba -bum. If things were different, we'd give you time to interview them individually. But things aren't different. So do your best, and don't mess up. Okay, so we can let them in for food, but we still have to make sure they're okay. Well, hey, it worked the first time when they were here. Spriddly, spriddly. Tell me your secrets, everybody. I still miss my beloved Sprinkles. Boo-hoo. I know, ma'am. I know. 
I've been doing my best not to fantasize about poisoning my employer lately. Understandable, but, you know, I mean, like I was say, it's not a crime. I mean, I guess technically that'd be murder, and so it's kind of a crime, but whatever. We're not concerned about that. Must not confess crimes. Must resist child's powerful spray. <laughs> Gah. Excuse me, what? <laughs> uh, can you can you can you talk about that some all more? All right, all right, I did it. I lowered the bridge and let those bastards. Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. <laughs> Send them back in. Oh, you sneak! You are hereby banished from the court of Scarborough. Prince Phineas was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the kingdom of Petrard. Oh, go away. Indeed, get out of here. Get him out of here. Well spotted, Guardian. All right, you guys are good to go in. Listen, I'm just doing my job. And that's how you truth spray your way to success. <laughs> yeah, that's what we said the first time when we truth sprayed them and they were like, like, when we caught the one dude smuggling drugs, Lil was like, and that's how you truth spray your way to success. Excellent line, m'lady. But that was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. Yeah, you are. We already called Striker. They're fine. I'll, I'll talk to him again just to, you know, hear her go, boo some more, but... Well done, uncovering that horrible spy. Can we come in and eat now? Yes. Yes, you can. Come on in. The tunnels are fine. Bless you, dear child. Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. Yeah, I know. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us... <laughs> Well, if they are, build me a statue. You did the right thing in a previous turn. You unmasked a traitor, and you were kind to refugees. Four stars. Bam! Oh, I am nailing this one. Hello. Where do I enlist? Okay, you seem like the perfect soldier, which makes me question you, but... You're there. Here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. It is the name. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. Um, no. Uh, no, I'll, I'll talk to you first. You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Also, don't smash our own soldiers, please. Houlihan. Okay, Bosco Houlihan. And last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. I mean, he is, but that doesn't mean I want to smash his head. Yeah, you're you're right. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. Ah, <sighs> you people. Ah. <sighs> okay, tell me more. So to be clear, you're mad that he ran away from Glorianne? Yes. Because you wouldn't run away from Glorianne if she wanted you. Yes, but she's made it clear that she doesn't. This little drama is wrapping up quite nicely. It will once I smash Elmer John's head like a jug. I don't think a head really smashes like a jug. How would you know? Did you grow up with hundreds of jugs around the house because your father was a jugsmith? Well, you got me there. Jugsmith. It's a real thing. I... I mean, I could truth spray him. Like, I don't doubt him, though. I just don't know what to do. I guess talk to him again? Maybe? 
<sighs> Why are you stalling? Let me through. I want to go join the army so I can... Yeah, yeah. Smash Elmer's head like a jug. Yeah, I got it. No. Well, yes, but I want to join the army so I can find my place. My purpose. Glorianne doesn't want me. I have come to terms with that. Maybe in the army I can find some brotherhood. Some kinship with other people who maybe have signed up for the same reasons as me. A broken heart. And a desire to break heads. Like jugs. Okay. So my first thought was like, you look like the perfect soldier, so we should enlist you. Which means you're not going to be the perfect soldier, so we should deny you. And then he's like, I want to go join the army to smash Elmer's head. I'm like, I really shouldn't deny you. But now he's like, I want to go join and like find brotherhoods, people like me. Are we going to set Elmer and Bosco together? We're playing matchmake. Like we already set up Grumpin' T. Danklesworth with Welp. Like we're playing Cupid already. And to be fair, she did say, like, I hope there's a big, strong man to protect him. Or a big, strong like person. I guess, you know, doesn't matter. I don't think she cared either way. Someone to protect Elmer. So if we think that this triumphs his desire to punch Elmer's face in. That was surprisingly deep, Bosco Houlihan. Thank you. Now let me at that rascal Elmer John, and I'll tear him apart like an old hat. Please don't. First it was jugs, now it's old hats. I don't know. Because, like, it's very clearly like he's going to go and attack Elmer, and that's bad. But, like, everything else, like, with her hints being like, they needs to be someone, like, big and strong to protect him. Check. He's like, I want to find my purpose and brotherhood. Check. I want to meet people who are in my like-minded situation, broken-hearted. Check. I think we do it. I think that the, the checks overcome the negatives, and if Elmer's head ends up as a paste, well, you know. Listen, Buster, we need you. Also, to be fair, let's, let's just be fair. Elmer's not here to hear us, but, like, this guy's going to be a better soldier than Elmer anyway, so if it takes... Him going to the army to smush Elmer to join the army. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry, Elmer. Casualties of war. I mean you're all you're all, all troops are, are valued and worthwhile and <clears throat> My name is Bosco. I know. But Listen, Bosco, we need you. Okay, good. Look out, Elmer John. I'm coming to smash your head like a jug. I've heard. Yeah, go get him. If he's there. Honestly, I forget what I did with him. Let's just hope they don't meet. Or maybe they meet and, like, bond over a broken heart. Four point oh. So I don't know if that counts the draft stuff, though, or just the admit deny. Because, like, we know we got four stars on all that. I don't know if this means if we got the draft right or not with Bosco. Like, I, I'm sure of everyone except Bosco. Okay, yeah, it is just these three. So it does not count the draft for the four star stuff. Grumpkin D. Dankworth. All right, let's go back up the princess. Stand up against the mages, because screw them. I'm like, it's a smaggle, and we're going to be like, <laughs> you still call us that. That's dumb. Which is exactly why we must start using them immediately. Hey, you. I already kicked you out of here once. Get going. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. A luxury we can ill afford. Yes, we can. All right. I, whatever you have to say, Tyronius, no. Screw you. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Aye. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. Yeah, and his name is Tyronius. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. No. You know Tyronius of Thanatos, I believe. Yeah, I do. He's a jackass. I've had the pleasure, I guess. Yes, I remember this little guardsman. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? I have. 
Um, sure. I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. Yes, I, I mean, it's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Oh, you should not have said that. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. I might have known. Wait, Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. Can I talk about the part where I went to a demon hell realm and met the devil? We don't know that. It's still too early. How long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? No. Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, no. they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. No. Like, I've already stopped one of their plots to overthrow stuff. No. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm going to stop there. It's starting to sound weird. They want all the crystals, access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. They can take their crystals and shove them. The good doctor could simply give us the blueprints, or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. To be fair, I could give you the chronometer and have you press it and like evaporate you across space and time, but. Dr. Beatrix feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. The Mage's Guild is and always has been reckless. There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Yeah. Wait, what? We both knew what this was. Well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? Yes. They are way too dangerous. I use the Chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? Hell, we've been there. Spoken like a scientist. Do you have a master's degree? How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. Also, d no. It's like... What would happen if you said yes? Like, there's no way that could be right. Like, yeah, this game gives you, like, red herrings and being like, oh, here's the big scary guy. Oh, he's actually fine. Here's the, like, Disney singing Princess Chloe. Oh, wait, she's an arsonist. But, like, the game has very specifically been like, he is racist towards you and calls you a slur, even if you think it's stupid and laugh at him for it. You specifically stopped a plot with the other mage by deciphering the plans. That's like, oh no, there's this dark plot that the mages guilt. Like, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're bad, bad people. Like, why would you be like, that's eh, fine. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the mages guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. To be fair, I answered my own question. The more I thought about it, if you want to do the Malcolm way of you're like, well, this is a bad idea, but actually I want to give them the power just to see how they screw everything up because it'll be funny. That's why you would say yes to them. Then at least allow the guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. Oh. For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being. My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. I talk to anyone? Yes, there we go. Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. I'm just here to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. It's an important decision and I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good choice. With you, I mean. That's cute. Also, you'd think he'd be more outspoken considering that how much the Mages Guild hates non-humans. I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now. Hi. Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. 
Because I'm not a racist blowhard. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mums club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. Hopefully your words will not sway Desdemona on future matters. Like, I wish you could be like, yeah, I've also stopped the plot by the Mages Guild. Oh, yeah, and they're also racist against everyone. Like, Fireball Canyon, Kaladar, and of course, Pachard, Marvog of the Sprawl, Smack Dab in the Million, and uh... Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. Thank you. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. That's fine. They're not as much of a problem now that Desdemona's got, like, the reins. Like, before it was like, oh my goodness, I have to stop Ash at all costs. But, like, now it's like, well, Desdemona's taken control of the kingdom, so... That's fine. Whatever. They can be pissy all they want. I'm friends with the queen. Do 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 do. Woo! Hello. How's what I don't understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. All right, let's let's hear all the arguments. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste and fashion, or a lousy court jester. Burn! Oh my goodness, I nearly did a spit take there. I I would see. There's a couple things I expect in this game, and sometimes I'm not like I didn't I, like. I mean, not that it's you know an unused joke before to. You know, set up the old bait and switch. Like, the ah, the two cents of a goofy hop that questionable taste. And Malcolm! You know, it's not an unheard of joke. I just didn't expect Stryker to do it. Yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Like, if Malcolm said it, it would make... Oh, man, all right. Say, point Stryker. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join said quorum, but she was... I and she is here. I what? I she is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. <laughs> ah, Lil, you're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. Uh huh. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. I shouldn't say, but I kind of feel like... Like, we don't want them interfering with Desdemona. But I almost wonder if we can get them to also ally against the Mages Guild. Well, you guys are the royal advisors. I think it's probably okay to loop you in. Go ahead, soldier. Well, that mage guy Tyronius was there trying to convince the queen to use my chronometer 3000 to help win the war. Wait, you're what? Don't worry about it. Anyways, Dr. B was there. Snore! Dr. B was there, and she thought it was too dangerous to use, and I said it was a bad idea. And then the queen said she'd think about it. That's it. Thank you for that briefing, soldier. This could impact our military strategy immensely. I just... Uh, I don't know. Like, that... Uh, like, Ash is definitely going to be with Tyronius, but... I feel like Stryker might be against him. I don't know. Not to mention the implications for my spies. And I'm Malcolm. Yes, Can you I are. Can I go now? You're dismissed. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if I did that one right. I It's really up in the air if they're going to side with Tyronius or against him. But I, I kind of feel... Well, actually, I don't know, because, like, Ash might be for him, Stryker probably against him, and I'm like, well, Malcolm will, oh, wait, it's Malcolm. He's going to do Malcolm things. Like, I don't know. No. But, you know, that's what you get for playing a story game. 
We just don't know what is going on. Hi, Garby. Welcome to Garby's Emporium of Wonder. Lil, about time you showed up. I've had every mage in town come by the shop today trying to buy up all the power crystals. Really? You mean you don't have any left? I wouldn't have if I didn't hide a few away from my best customer. Ah, thanks, Garby. I'm your only customer. You were my only customer, but now that I cornered the mage market, I don't know if I'll be able to keep these crystals in stock. Well, the good ones, anyway. The mages didn't seem to have too much interest in the cheapo ones. Hey, by the way, before you get to shopping, this blowtorch you sold me with Fosse carved onto it? Yes? I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. And I'll sell it to you for just four gold. Sure. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I'll need it, but if the game is like, hey, remember this thing that you sold to me? And I'm like, yeah, I remember it. Like, how about you buy it back for way cheaper because you might need it? Yeah, no. Okay. I, I will accept that deal. Uh, you know what? We can... I've upgraded everything to three. Why? Do I need to? No, probably not. I got my blowtorch back. I mean, it's not mine, but... I mean, to be fair, for recruiting for the war... Lil, how goes the Battle of the Southern Gate? And, like, Chloe comes back and be like, give Chloe her blowtorch and point her at the enemy. Yeah, you know, it's wartime. Same old. How are things around here holding up? Great! Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. That's... good? You bet it is! If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. Then we can get rid of the rats. We don't have rats! I mean, we do, but technically they have us. <laughs> Turns out they own the building and we just rent from them. Now. Oh. But if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. Yeah, I mean, they seem to be okay so far. I could do without all the hissing. Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. How did that rem... Never mind. A letter? From who? From Hamish. Yay! A letter from Dad? Gimme! Hey, sweet pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. Oh, I have to click stuff. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. I mean, except from the questionable decision about the counselors, whether or not I should have told them, I'm actually doing pretty damn good today. Four stars. Two out of three for sure draft. I'm 99% I'm sure I got right. I don't know about Bosco, but like I'm I'm doing all right. I definitely feel good given Tyronius, the, the metaphorical figure. So, you know, I'm doing good, Dad. I'm doing good. Love you too, Dad. But what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's easily distracted. Oh boy, neither answer seems right. Are you talking to me? Sure. No. We're gonna stay positive for Dad. I think, like, between the two... Us being doing well probably is the better choice. Lil writes a letter that suggests everything is going great in order to make her father feel better. Are you sure? Well, okay, what's the other one say? Lil will write a letter that expresses her honest feelings about how difficult things are for her. Are you sure? Actually, you know what? No, no, no. We're gonna do this one because, like, I'm thinking, like, okay, like, We've got, like, Tyronius being, like, the secret plots, and, like, the, the counselors are all, like, ah, secret plots. Like, I, I just, my initial thought was, like, I think it would be better if Hamish is, like, knowing you're doing well. But now I'm, like, there are so few people that Lil can trust. 
Like, she can trust Desdemona. She can trust the goblins. But, like, I I think you need to be honest so that... Because, like, I could see your, your dad, like, coming to help you at the end. Like, like yes, dad, I, I, I'm, like, doing okay, but I could still use you here type of thing. Because it's true, like, not... Yeah. That yeah. should do it. Hey, Arda, mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Yeah, where does it need to go? Sure thing, Lil. We're all thinking of your dad, Lil. Oh, hey, what are you doing here? Well, if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Uh-huh. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. My former legitimate place of business, that is. Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. Sounds about right. How much does he owe you? 30 gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Hey, I earned that. Oh, he just straight up takes it. I was going to be like, well, show me the marker and I'll give you the gold, but... And so did I. Pleasure doing business with you, kiddo. But hey, I'm not all bad. I hate to take a young kid's pocket money so heartlessly. No, you don't. Doesn't seem that way. Hate to take it without giving them a chance to win it back, that is. Fredo, no gambling. No gambling. No gambling, Fredo. No gambling, just talking. Listen, the Sprawl Brawl has a plan out of town today, and they got the game on that there TV. Tell you what I'll do. You pick who wins, and I'll give you your 30 gold back. If you don't, I keep it. How does that sound to you? I mean, that sounds like a good deal. I don't pay anything if I lose. That sounds like gambling. No gambling. I ain't hearing a no here. <laughs> Which team do you want to hear about? Um, sir, I think you have a problem more than my dad does. Uh, I guess tell us about the sprawl brawlers. With most of their star players being drafted in the war, the team was left with the weaklings and rejects even the army wouldn't take. What they're lacking in muscle and skill, they are also lacking in technical <laughs> knowledge of the game. They're squirrely, but they can sometimes pull off a win. Uh-huh. You betting on the brawlers? No gambling. Which team do you want to hear about? Now this team is really something. The owner fired all the players and hired his extended family to play for the team. I'm talking cousins in the outfield, aunties on the pitch, and even his great-great-uncle is playing the fourth stop swing. Never seen a team bicker so much, but when someone insults their mother, they're on. You betting on them? Which team do you- I'll, I'll do the Sprawl Brawlers, I guess. You betting on- If they even let me in for not. No gambling. All right, kid. Your bet is in. Good luck. I bet Brawlers fans are sure wishing their star players weren't cannon fodder for an enemy army right about now. Yeah, that's about it. Great Uncle Zack, the Falcon's elderly but unstoppable full stop swing, was just lifted up by his formidable nephews, Kron and Lorik, breezing past the Brawlers' warded circle. Oh. Despite a nice attempt to unseat the Wiggly Pig, Sprawl's third whacker, Korab, ended up with a face full of mud. Truly grim stuff for the Brawlers. We're down to the final seconds here, folks. No. The Falcon's first flanksman, Fiona, has taken out her slingshot. She's pulling it back, and she's beamed the glistening gargoyle, and the Fosca Falcons win! Congratulations to the Fosca family on another bloody successful family reunion. All right, you keep my gold. Hey, tough luck, kid. See you around. <sighs> well, I mean, I didn't lose anything, though, so... Hey. Hey. Lil, I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. How are you planning to do that? 
I figure if I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Solid plan. Yeah, I'm not gonna interfere. I mean, despite our differences, they're still my friends. I think I've done everything I know. Uh, I think I have, but just to I be sure. Really oh, never mind. I was like, I'll check the map, see if there's anywhere, but apparently no. I've done All right, let's hit the hay. Get our little epilogue for the day. Reunited with his darling whelp, Grumpkin T. Dankworth was a changed man. Together, the two traveled through Kaladar, sailed Lake Inez, and even summered in Fireball Canyon. He laughed as he had never laughed in all his days, and their nights were filled with food and wine, music and love. They ran, holding hands through fields of flower. On one such sprint, Grumpkin clutched at his chest. His heart had overflowed. More accurately, he suffered a massive heart attack. Surprised he might to revive his former master and now true love, Welp was unable to resuscitate the old man. A simple funeral was held, and the widower Welp counted himself lucky to have ever had such a love as this. As for his substantial riches, they were held by Mr. Dung, head of BS, until such time as Mr. Dangsworth's will was read. The old man had donated the entirety of his fortune to the GLA. A small flower garden was built in his honor outside their headquarters. Aww, look at that! Julian. Thanks to his timely arrival back in the sprawl, Julian was able to prepare a lavish birthday party for his best friend, Gary. Every goblin, troll, halfling, cyclops, and wool person who was anyone was there. It was a bright spot in what had otherwise been a dark few months for the sprawl. As a birthday present, Julian gave Gary a pure, unrefined power crystal that he received from the visiting the miners. The glint of its unearthly glow reflected in Gary's eyes as he inserted the powerful crystal into his practice wand. He thanked Julian profusely for this most precious present. It never left his sight from that day on. The next day, Julian presented the plans he was carrying to the city council. These plans detailed an extensive tunnel system to be dug underneath the walls of the sprawl, which would allow food to be secretly and safely moved into the sprawl right under the enemy's nose. After a short period of deliberation, the council realized just how hungry they all were and unanimously approved the plan. Someone will be arriving to start digging the tunnel system soon, but it's all on the up and up and pretty hush hush. All right, we gotta look out for them. With new plans of bringing food in the city working their way through the bureaucracy of the sprawl, there were enough rations for the refugees from Scarborough to eat, and a place was made for them at the refugee camp springing up down at the docks. The Duchess was not impressed by her new surroundings, but to be honest, she is a very difficult person to please. Swift justice was visited upon the traitor who lowered the drawbridge of Castle Scarborough in the middle of the night, allowing the enemy to enter and take control of the duchy. The villain was hanged in the town square. Brutal? Certainly, but this is war and it's better to be safe than sorry. Plus it made for a fine day's entertainment, as there are no video games in the sprawl to keep people amused. That's what he gets. Oh. Um. You? Battle? What, what do I... Do I... I just, I, I guess I can only click battle. Ow. Yeah, their guns are kind of beating me. Hey! <laughs> the garrison stationed at the Sprawl's secret western food depot successfully repelled the invading Pachardian forces. The Sprawl's reserve food stores are safe from the enemy's greedy hands and empty stomachs. <laughs> After briefly endeavoring to smash Elmer's head like a jug, Bosco shockingly found common ground with his neighbor, and he and Elmer buried the hatchet and became brothers in arms. Their teamwork during the battle became a thing of legend, and together they saved many lives. They each received an official sprawling medal for guts and moxie. Alright, apparently that was the right choice. I gonna say, it's not a crime. I mean, I guess technically that'd be murder, and so it's kind of a crime, but... Whatever, we're not concerned about that. Well, 